Hi everyone, I'm JD from Willow Bound Journals. Welcome back to my channel. So I get a lot of questions about what bags I use, what size they are and where I get them. So I thought I'd answer all of those in a video and I've pulled out a whole bunch of bags that I have in my collection and I'll just go through them and I've got my ruler <laughs> and we'll go and measure them and I'll tell you where I get each one. So, one of the first bags that I love using are glassine bags. So, this is probably my favourite material for bags and envelopes. I just love the feel of it, I love the sound of it, and I love how it's a little bit translucent so you can see what you put inside and also what you put behind. So, I've got a whole bunch of glassine bags. These all come from a tattered dream on Etsy. I'll link her shop below. The lovely Denise. Hi Denise. <laughs> she is wonderful to work with and I get a whole bunch of different sizes. She has more sizes than this but this is the one that I use to make my journals out of. So for example this one here is made out of a glassine bag. You can see the cover there that I've stitched around. That's the glassine bag. So let me measure that one first and my cat has come to visit so it is 27 centimeters by about 19 centimeters so yes I'm in Australia so you might just have to google a converter from a centimeters to inches but if you go to her shop I believe that she has the inches in the listings so she said she has all the sizes for her bags and then going from smallest to largest here, we have 12 and a half centimeters to about seven centimeters. I like using those ones for little pockets in a journal. Same with this one, just bigger pockets, <laughs> 17 centimeters by about nine and a half. This one again, I usually like using this one for pages, for a pocket page. I'll just cut down this edge here so that there's a pocket here and a pocket there, or it could also be a large pocket page. And this one is 18-ish centimeters and 12 centimeters. And then here we've got this one, which is 21 a bit and a bit <laughs> centimeters and about 14 and a half and a bit more centimeters so this one I love again using as pages for a journal um, but I also love using this one for small journal covers as well so then moving on to the brown paper bags I get lots of questions about these ones in particular these are what I use to make journal covers as well like this one so these ones are a bit taller and narrower than the glassine bag so depending on the cover paper that I have to use I'll choose, um, I'll decide on which cover, um, which bag I use depending on the size because this one I chose the paper bag because the sizing of this beautiful book page fit well for this size cover. Um, so this one I get from the local IGA which is just a grocery store I guess you call it. <laughs> so just the local IGA. This one I get from Safeway or Woolies, Woolworths. Um, and so this one is 25-ish centimeters by nine or oh, almost 20 centimeters and then this one is 20 centimeters by 26 centimeters and I can put packs of these in my Etsy if anyone is interested I know some of you were asking so um, I can do a mix I can do uh, like a 10 pack of just the dark brown or 10 pack of the light brown or I can do five of each or whatever <laughs> um, however many um, so then I have uh, just let me know if you're interested in that so I can do that then I have other kind of fun bags that you can use in multiple ways um, this one is when I went to the local stationery shop I just asked if they had any bags that I could buy. So you know at the counter when you make a purchase they often put your goods in a bag and they had different sizes and I was like oh 
I wonder if they have the small size. So I just asked, can I pay for a bag? And I think I got this for like $2.50 or something. And there were 50 of them for $2.50. So I was like, yeah, that's a good deal. Um, it does come with the string attached, but that's a bit unfortunate, but that's okay. I just cut it off there. And then I use the rest to cover it up and make um, bags. Let's see if I have an example. Yeah, so these ones are these bags here that I've just covered over with napkin, just using a glue stick and napkin, sewed around the edges, and now I've made pretty bags. So I can paper clip those into a journal or stick it onto the page, and I just have a whole bunch of different types here. Some I use tissue paper for, some I you, you can use decorative paper, you can use wallpaper, but yeah, that's what I did with some of those bags. And then, that's an idea of a place you can get them to, just ask places that um, have little bags that they give out um, with the purchases. This one you get free from like the local RGA or Safeway again. Um, and they often sometimes have the, often sometimes <laughs> have the ones at the bakery as well. So um, mushroom bags and the bakery bread bags. I love the ones that have the clear window, they're fun to use. This could be a cover, this one's a bit battered, <laughs> um, but I usually use these in journals, just in my, um, as pages inside a journal. So mushroom bags, keep your eye out for those. And then packaging bags, when, again, when you go to your pharmacy, when you go to your post office, when you go to gift shops or whatever, um, and they, whenever they say, would you like a bag? I say, yes, please, even though I don't need one <laughs> because I'm, I know I'll take it home to make journals out of. So again, this was from a pharmacy. I can just fold it over and add that to um, a journal. And often what I like to do is over the course of a year, I'll collect all these different types of bags from all different places. And then at the end of the year, I'll put all the bags together and create a bag journal. So I've done that two years in a row now. And maybe I'll do that again this year. This is just a plain white bag, you can see here. Sometimes they put sticky tape over it. I think this one might have come from the news agent maybe. So sometimes they don't ask, they just put it in a bag and sticky tape it. Um, and yeah, so they can get a bit battered, but that's okay. It can be a true junk journal using these types. And this one was from the post office. Again, I don't think I needed a bag. I think I, I bought some stamps and I don't really need a bag to carry around stamps, but I was like, yes, please give me a bag. <laughs> um, and you can fold that over. And of course you can turn this into a journal or add it as a page, do whatever. And then here's just another fun little idea of some bags from negatives. You know, when you used to get the negatives in a little bag <laughs> in the film with the film, so going through old photos and I pulled all those out and that was quite fun. I kept the negatives too so I can use those. Some other bags. And of course, if you've been watching my channel, you might have seen um, a typo bag video series that I'm doing where I'm making a journal out of a typo bag. And this is the finished bag journal. And this cover was made from a typo bag. So again, another bag just at a shop where they put the goods into a bag and can turn it into a journal. So there's some ideas for you and um, let me see, did I cover everything? Let me measure just these ones I suppose. Uh, these ones you kind of can't um, specifically get them this size, it's just whatever they give you at the shop but these ones are 14 and a half ish centimeters by 11 and a half centimeters ish and I don't know well, <laughs> if anyone wants to know um, 28 and a half by 15 and a half and then yeah these are just novelty it just depends where you live what you have around you what shops you have and what bags they have so yeah I guess these were the candy bag size those are what they call it so that's a pretty stock standard um, size but yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, and yeah, all the links to A Tattered Dream will be in the description box below. And um, yeah, go have fun collecting bags. 
and making journals using bags. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.